Hi guys. Um, <laughs> I'm still alive. I haven't posted in a while. Um, last time you saw me, I was in Cyprus, and I was having a really good day. Um, my last video, I was saying that I was going to go out for lunch, which I did. It was the first time I went out for anything besides a doctor's appointment or, you know, just some shit like that in like seven, eight months. So it was a big deal and we had a really good day, um, took some photos and it was just really nice, man. Um, we got to the restaurant and uh, it was like on the sea and it was just gorgeous. I had a lovely quinoa salad, um, which again was just so nice and I uh, had a really nice day. But, <laughs> and I hate to say that, I hate to say but, but it didn't last and um, yeah I was kind of nervous about posting another video because uh, I didn't want I mean you never want to like tell people you're doing shitty um, especially when you've been going well and I'm trying to motivate others to take back their health it's not um, easy to for me to, to post about but I need to be real man like if you're in a journey right now I'm sorry you know that it's it's not gonna just go up man like you're gonna it's gonna be like dun 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 you know and whilst I am doing better the days after that were really bad so basically there's only one thing I can well there's two things that I can contribute to you so I had my day where I felt really good, and this must be going back like what five weeks now, four weeks, um, and about three four days later, I had my two amalgam fillings removed. At this time, also I was also doing a, a parasite cleanse. I reached. I was doing doubled the dose and sometimes a bit more because I just felt like my body could handle it um, and I was also doing Lugol's iodine drops and also in enemas as well which was really making me purge out some toxins when I released the enema like I was <laughs> every time I did it I'd just be on the toilet just like sweating just like feeling really horrible um, but I did feel like it purged a lot of stuff out of me uh, I was also doing Mabendazole, which is a Western parasite drug for removing uh, like pinworms and roundworms and things like that. I, th I think I'm right with the species of worm there. Um, so I was doing a lot of things, and, th and then I had the, the amalgams removed, two in the same week, and it was not a safe removal. I didn't use a rubber dam, I didn't use any app apparatus for like breathing, and... I just thought I'll risk it because I wanted to get them out ASAP so I could begin collation because I'm going to be doing the Andy Cutler protocol. I've ordered DMPS, which I'm going to be taking. There's DMSA, which I could have taken, but a lot of people get uh, yeast issues when they take that, and I've already got enough yeast issues going on, Candida. So, yeah, that's out the window. I'm going to take the DMPS, um, and as I'm doing those rounds, I'll do more videos. So I'll, I'll save the time on this video and I won't go into it here. If you want to learn about the Andy Cutler protocol, then you can of course go and do a search and you'll find tons of information. But it's the safest chelation protocol out there. People have done chelation therapy and made themselves worse by doing it wrong, by doing too much at once. Things like glutathione, be really careful taking glutathione if you're uh, metal toxic, please. People have become really, really sick. I've seen crazy stories. So just be careful, okay? I'm not saying glutathione's going to mess you up, but be wary that it has messed some people up. Anyway, I'll get past that. So I'll, I'll go into the, the collation therapy when I'm actually getting around to do it. But, but basically, I, I had those removed, and then the, the next day, I just fell off. I just felt really spacey, uh, and then the, the day after that I felt even spacier, 
I was getting a little bit of anxiety. I wasn't sure where it was coming from. Um, and then the day after that, um, I was having like really bad cramps in my stomach. Uh, I didn't feel like I was digesting my food. And that night, so I'm not sure of the time scale of all this, um, but that one of those nights, I just I felt horrible. I had to keep turning because it felt like there was something in my stomach that just wasn't really sitting right. It felt really heavy, horrible, um, just like a pain. And I had to keep moving in my bed. And I was doing this for like two hours. It was like one in the morning at this point. And I thought, and I kept going to the toilet, you know, we're not going to worry about too, too much information on this channel because I need to be real with you. We've all got stuff that we need to talk about. Um, so I went and sat on the toilet like a couple times. I couldn't go. Um, I just felt horrible. And then I think I went to the toilet, but then I went back into my bed and I still felt horrible. And then I felt like I was going to be sick. And I spent about half an hour just throwing up uh, it was like 2 in the morning, it's horrible, I was on my own, uh, I was just throwing up in the bathroom, it was sick everywhere, I had to clean it all up, it was like the worst, <laughs> the worst night I've had in years, like it was just horrific, I just felt like I was fucking dying, and I went back to bed and I, I was just so weak, like, yeah, I hadn't been that weak in a long time. It was like I had the worst, worst, worst flu I'd ever had in my life times five. It was just, it was just horrible. I couldn't move. Um, I really needed water. And I text one of the other patients like, can you please bring me some water as soon as you wake up? Because I just couldn't move. My whole body was in agony. So, yeah, that happened. And then the next day, I was just in bed all day, just like shaking, shivering. Um, but it, I, I just think it was die off. I think it was either die off and, and the metals. I think it was combined, really. I did the amalgam removal. Um, and then I had a lot of stuff. You know, I was doing the, the Mabenders, like the, all the parasite stuff, the iodine, the ozone. I was taking diatomaceous earth. Like, I, I was doing a lot of things at once. And that's the lesson I want to give here. You know, be careful. I think it's good to go hard. I really do. But you've got to, you've got to take yourself to your limit. But then just back just a millimetre. Because you can't go over your limit. Because then, then you're going to set yourself back a little bit more. And you want to stay consistent. You don't want to keep hitting your limit, then stopping your protocol. Then hitting your limit, and then stopping your protocol. You want to just under your limit, and then you can keep going consistently maybe even half the thing the key thing is to get to a level that you can feel that something is happening that you're doing something and staying consistent with it because if you stop you're just going to go back and then it's like you're just a yo-yo and i've done a lot of that over the past uh you know journey length of my journey so far i've done a lot of that just stopping and starting and yeah that, that's something i've learned so how am I doing since then? So it was very difficult. Um, you know, it was quite sad as well because I was doing so well, and you know, the guys were really happy with how I was doing. And then I had this upset where I wasn't doing so well, um, and it was really hard to deal with, man, because I felt like I'd come so far. I was doing the best I'd been in months, um, but saying that, I still sort of am. Okay, it's hard for me to tell, you can probably tell by how I'm able to speak and communicate um, how much I'm doing better just uh, just mentally. I still have a lot of brain fog, don't get me wrong, but mentally I do feel stronger, which is good. Like, it's an improvement and any improvement is awesome. So, um, yeah. So what I want to talk about now, I want to talk about what I'm going to be doing going on what my current protocol currently is so currently I've actually had no protocol because I've ordered a stool test um, which I've sent off now it was absolutely horrendous collecting that <laughs> I had to do not only one but three so three days in a row I had to collect my poo and put it into a little thing 
and it was just like I was just like gagging and heaving everywhere. It was quite funny, really, but yeah, it wasn't fun to do. So I've sent that off. That's gone away. Uh, that's gone to Doctors Data. They're an American company, but they've got a branch here in the UK. And then um, I've sent away. No, I haven't sent away. I've uh, I've got an adrenal test that uh, I need to redo, so I'm going to do that as well. So anyway, that's gone off. Um, I've got a few more supplements um, that I really needed, which one of those is uh, where's it gone? Well, betaine. So betaine HCL is hydrochloric acid. Basically, the night I was sick. I had food come out of me undigested that I'd eaten eight hours before. So I think that was like the feeling that I had in my stomach that was all heavy. I then started to do, I, I did a couple of uh, stomach acid tests where you, you, uh, you take a teaspoon of uh, bicarbonate soda like first thing in the morning. And if you burp within three minutes, like repeatedly burping like burp, 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 then your stomach acid is okay. If it's after three minutes, then it's kind of, well, even at the three minute mark, then it's kind of weak and you need to work on it. Um, but I didn't burp at all. And not even once. Like, I expected a little burp or something like that, but no, nope, I didn't burp at all. Like, 15 minutes went by, and I was like, okay, I have no stomach acid. So, I got straight back on the apple cider vinegar when I was out there. Um, and then when I got home, I had this uh, ready for me. So, yeah, I can now. Now I've done the stool test. I can start my protocol again because I had to stop all probiotics and basically everything I was doing to have a, a normal stool test done. Um, so as of yesterday, I'm back on my probiotics. I'm taking this, and um, and I'm just doing. I'm not doing as many supplements. I'm probably still taking like ten tablets a day, but um, two of those are magnesium. Like some people take one big multivitamin where I, I don't really want to do that I'd rather get the right levels of each vitamin myself and take it that way as individual tablets to me that just makes me I'm more conscious about what I'm taking then there's stuff in multivitamins that perhaps I don't really want to be taking so I haven't really got one here um, but there was somewhere but yeah multivitamins I'd rather know that I'm taking enough of something and uh, not too much of something else, etc. So, so that's why I take so many supplements, I think, because it probably looks like I'm taking a lot of supplements when really someone might be taking the same but just in one pill, so I'm just taking it in more. So with vitamin C, I take, uh, so this is handy. I've, I've got it in the powdered version, which is uh, ascorbic acid, and then I've got myself a capsule machine um, which basically just measures out a gram into each capsule and I've made like 100 capsules probably for the, like a fifth of the cost of what they'd really cost if I if I ordered some really good tablets so yeah and then I've got the only other thing I've got now is COQ10 which is one of the ingredients uh, one of the, the main ingredients in forming ATP and if anyone has any mitochondrial issues you've got an issue with generating ATP so I've ordered that as well and that is it that's all I've ordered extra because I don't want to get myself uh, into too much at the minute I am looking into uh, getting some lysine to start taking when I do the Andy, Andy Cutler protocol because lysine or mine is deficient and so is my arginine um, and they can both become deficient when you've got say like Epstein-Barr virus uh, uh, lysine does generally get depleted when you've got a virus um, so when I did my nutritional panis, panel that did actually come to fruition that I do have uh, low lysine so I do think I'm going to order some lysine start taking that as well just to get that back in my body and maybe that will help combat some of the uh, uh, viral load or infection or whatever's going on so further than that, um, I'm going to be getting my own ozone machine, ASAP, I'm really short of money at the minute, <laughs> I'm just waiting for my benefits um, so I can get out of my overdraft, but yeah, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get my ozone machine as soon as I can, 
Um, I'm hopefully going to be having a little bit of help from my family to get one because I think it's really important that I carry on with the ozone and that will be with uh, anal insufflations and uh, maybe some ear insufflations, um, ozonating water to drink in, in the daytime. Um, so yeah, I'll be getting a really good medical grade ozone uh, machine um, so I can do some treatments at home. I'm also going to start doing enemas. I found enemas to be so helpful when I was out in Cyprus. You just feel like you're getting the toxins out. And when you see what comes out of you, you're kind of like, okay, I know I need to do this. I need to get that stuff out of me. Because the longer that, that toxic stuff is in you, it's just making you sicker, man. Like, get it out. I'm not saying do enemas every minute of the day uh, or for every bowel movement. I think that's bad. But I think one or two now and then is really beneficial and if you can do one every like two days that's really good it doesn't have to be coffee it doesn't have to put anything in it just make sure it's good filtered water and uh yeah you're that's okay like it's just going to help things moving when you've got to get toxins out of you it i just think it's really key i do think it's really beneficial and some people may disagree think you don't need to do enemas and stuff and you don't need to do them you don't have to do them at all to get better, I'm not saying if you don't stick water up your ass, <laughs> you're not going to get better. But I'm just saying, like, it will help you get toxins out quicker. Okay. Um. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I've got some organic wheatgrass powder that I've been taking a shot to get some uh, more nutrition in me. Um, anything else I can quickly say? Uh, I bought myself a little, this has been really helpful because I'm awful at taking my supplements. I just, my memory is just shocking. Uh, so yeah, I've got an AM and PM for every day and I haven't missed a single dose now because this is brilliant. And even though it's only like 2 99 it's saving my life one day at a time. So, oh, so that's where I'm at. Right now, I still have a long way to go guys, but I know more of what my problems are. I realise this has been a long video, but I just had a lot to talk about. I always do whenever I come on here. Um, I need to deal with parasites, and I need to deal with metals. Um, so as soon as my DMPS turns up, I'm going to begin collation, and I'll, I'll do a video explaining what I'm going to be doing, and how the protocol works, uh, for anyone who um, perhaps is interested or may have that as their own issue um, and I'll also be explaining more about the ozone machine I'll be getting as, as the time comes uh, but yeah that's basically every day I'm just going to be taking my probiotics sticking to the sort of little protocol I've got going on and I'll start to do weekly updates again at, at least weekly because I do want to get more messages out there I just haven't been well I'm feeling a bit better again and uh, I'm going to start doing uh, my treatments again so so now I have something to talk about I just haven't felt great and uh, I wanted to get this stool test and stuff out of the way and uh, I'll be I'll be able to tell you the results of that as well it's going to be testing for like gut dysbiosis uh, parasites which I'll be lucky if it sees anything because parasite tests are always like really bad but it is three different stools so hopefully it picks up something it's going to test for uh, like SIBO uh, and a fat absorption as well, yeah, and a couple other things. So it'll be a really handy test to see what what comes out of it. But so that's where I'm at now. I really hope that some of you guys are doing much better. I hope all you guys are doing much better. Um, whatever you're going through today, keep going. Um, listen to your body. That's one thing I'll quickly say. Listen to your body. I've had conversations with a friend recently. Um, how we read different things and we, and we start to go down one thing thinking that might be right for us and then we read another thing and think oh god everything we've done there was completely wrong and I think it's really key to listen to yourself you know listen to your own body for you don't listen to me like I have the answers listen to little bits of what I say that key into what your body is attuned to you know you really have to be your own advocate and uh, and figure out pretty much all of this out yourself. 
but I will try to help you as much as I can through my own experiences and journey. So I've got to the 20 minute mark, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much again for watching, I really hope you're all doing well. Happy healing and we'll speak soon. Goodbye.